Hey, great to see you all again. John and I are with Bill Jordan, our favorite, favorite boomer. Oh, baby gosh, boomer. Guys. Bill, um, I we're all friends on Facebook. And uh, I think mm -hmm. that's how we first met, if I'm not mistaken. But what I love about your Facebook posts is you are, all your posts are fun or inspiring or they make you think or they're, they're very positive. And that's why I have friends who send me cartoons and things like that. I love all those people that post positive things. And uh, um, unfortunately, not everybody does. Yeah, I, I try to, and I don't always do this. And I, I do post some that may be a little bit negative uh, if it's something about trust issues or something like that. You know, it's one of the ones I tend to lean on is the trust, respect, and loyalty. If you mess up one, you mess them all up. Yeah. That's not really a happy one, but it is one that is thought provoking, I think, because until I saw that, I never really strung those three things together that if you lose one, you do lose uh, all of them. But um, NC State here in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, used to have a basketball coach, great guy, Jim Valvano. We lost him to cancer years ago. But he famously said there's three things that everybody should do in life, three things everybody should do every day, laugh, think and cry. And he made his case for that, what we should do. So I kind of have that as an undercurrent through my thoughts in making posts on social media. Is it going to make somebody laugh? Is it going to make them think? Or could it make them cry? Maybe about a missing loved one or yeah. about their dog or something like that. So I try to push those buttons. I just try to stay clear of politics and stuff like that because that's uh, the, the, the really the uh, lightning rod things I try to steer clear of. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be divisive. Be positive. That's what I love about your um, your blog. But well, not everybody. I, I, it bothers me when I get and I I haven't actually unfriended anybody. But there's a couple of people I'm thinking of unfriending because I I always get negative stuff from them. Yeah, like, there are there are some people that when I'll see in my notifications, you know, uh, John Doe has made a comment on your post. I just immediately know that I'm not going to like it. Yeah, I'm going to go to it and it's going to be something snarky or, you know, and I'm not I'm not always correct about that. But more than likely, I am correct that if I see that somebody has commented, it's going to be in a negative um, manner. I made a post not very long ago about a, a book I was reading I had picked up and it's something like you're not as you're not as smart as you think you are. That's the name of the book. And it's common, common things that we think we know that we don't know, right. that we really don't know. And his comment was a political comment. Oh, is this a, and then he named a politician. Yeah. Is this one of their, you know, cult books yeah. or manuals or something like that? And I was going to let it slide and I just, and, and then I was going to message him and I'm like, no, I'll, I'm going to want, I want everybody to see. So maybe I'm being a keyboard commando myself. I want everybody to see my response to this. So I just said, Hey, please do not take a non-political post of mine and make it political. Yeah. And I said, that stri and then I said, strike one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, unfortunately, one. Unfortunately, yeah. politics is the most common negative that I run across on the. Uh, on the have internet. you have you ever have you ever read a post from an opposing view of pol politics or religion or whatever the lightning lightning rod issue is that made you stop and change your mind? <laughs> now, also, just as a as a a side note, especially for boomers like us, is that. I remember Facebook was sort of like the first uh, social media that was generally picked up by people who were older, not younger. I suspect a lot of it was to follow their kids and their grandkids uh, on that. Yeah. And uh, I sort of, I remember at the very beginning, anybody wanted to be a friend, I'd accept as a friend. But along the way, I found out there are some people who actually never respond uh, to anything I put up there. And that's okay. Uh, I'm not for everybody. Uh, but uh, I, I have a habit of always saying happy birthday when it publishes the birthday date. And there are some that have just never responded or some that block you from actually answering a, a comment or sending them other than a, a private message. 
So I've begun to call those off. But I think that maybe another conversation we should have someday is uh, uh, other uh, social media things other than this and LinkedIn, which uh, people can comment on quite a bit and uh, probably are guilty of doing the kind of things you're talking about. Uh, because the distance, it's not right in front of you, so it's not in your face. They feel some kind of safety from that distance. It's like uh, emails. Yeah. They can send you something, but they don't have that interaction with you. So they might even say things that they would never say, as you say, to your face. Uh, right. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, it helped you understand maybe how they really feel. So it's in a great way it it it, it uh, gets some of. But I think that maybe it'd be worth our as boomers to talk about the new social media's that I'm not involved in. I know my wife is on Instagram a lot because I think that's where the grandkids go, and that's what they're using or TikTok or things like that. So I wonder whether or not uh, those are different in that. I don't. Can you comment on those? Uh, do you get yeah, I'm on Instagram. I don't, I don't, I don't mess with TikTok at wow. all unless somebody forwards me a funny video that links me to TikTok. But I don't have an account or anything there. Instagram, I, I do enjoy Instagram. I follow a lot of great people on Instagram, and I do enjoy the interaction uh, there. Something to remember to um, just to streamline your life and uh, to make it, you know, as smooth flowing as you can. It is possible to be friends with someone but not be friends with them on social media. There are people, some of them know who they are, that mm. I like them better in person Yeah. than on social media. It's like they are somebody else on social media. Yeah. And it's okay that you stay friends, but you just don't follow them. Hmm. You just don't well, follow it is, them. There, there is something about social media that some people drop all the role, the rules of nicety that we mm -hmm. actually practice in person. They just, those rules go out the window when they're on in front of a keyboard. You know what, I, and this is, a, I'm making a blanket statement and, and uh, uh, being very judgmental here, I suppose, and I shouldn't be, but I, I think I have noticed that most of the snarky comments come at night. <laughs> and so, After a couple of glasses of wine? Exactly. So I, I, there needs to be, I don't know. I think, you know, it's, it's kind of like, don't drink and drive. Don't drink and post. Don't drink and comment. Um, it, it really, because there are some that just post stuff that's really not like them in person. Yeah. And I'm all about being in person. Again, we've talked about this, you know, during COVID and we couldn't go out of our houses forever. And we right. all promised that when it was lifted, man, we were going to get together. And a lot of times that has not happened. So I am once again in 2024, as I did in 2023, being very diligent about if I can once a week meet a friend for coffee or lunch or something like that in person, face to face and interact with them. Man, that is just so much better than, hey, did you see my post about we went to France? No, I really didn't. You know, I've got, believe it or not, like a thousand friends on Facebook. I can't keep up with everybody. Yeah. If you want me to know that you've done something, uh, I'll happy, be happy to celebrate with you, but you're going to need to text me or call me because I just don't see it. And there are people who get offended if you didn't see their Facebook post. I, yeah. I, I, I can't, I, I can't do it. If I, I you know what, I, I, I did post one the other day. If you, if you find that your stress level drops when you put your phone down, that's telling you something. Well, I recommend that we all follow those rules that we were grew up with, which it involves if you can't say something nice, don't say something at all. And us boomers, we know that to be one of the great shibboleths of society. We ought to practice it more. I believe you are correct, sir. In the Embrace the Boom mug, by the way, 50, holds 15 ounces of whatever you want to put in it. It's amphibious. <laughs> Left hand, right hand, that doesn't matter. But you can get that at Bill Jordan, embracetheboom.com, and uh, free shipping on all domestic orders. And my book is available on Amazon, 15 Practices to Live. I believe, and it works for me, a better less drama-filled, more rewarding yep. life. So yep. 
There you go. And I appreciate you guys having me back on again. Live your life, forget your age, and embrace the boom. Embrace here. the boom. Amen, here, brother. Here. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.